Okay, here's a very quick rewind of the things I've learned about Turkish in the last 24 hours, um, which was all triggered by the fact that I ran into a woman in a rest stop who I thought was speaking a language I didn't know, and I went up to her and asked her if it was Turkish. She was like, yes, and then very shocked and asked me how I knew, and I was just like, it doesn't sound like anything else I know. It doesn't sound like Greek, it doesn't sound like Arabic. Um, and I know the grammar is very complicated and the sounds are not necessarily in a bunch of adjacent languages, so I guess Turkish, and I was right. Uh, plus, we, like, <clears throat> of the minor ethnic populations that have moved to the U.S., they are on the larger end, right? Like, I would have been more likely to get Turkish than Albanian, per se. Anyways, so, very interesting things. Um, among them is that things like um, shu and bu, which are this and that, um, in addition to the pronouns, have the word is built into them, which is very much like Hebrew, and I think like Arabic as well. Um, so if I said, um, what, shu, buk, uh, chujuk, it's like, this is a big child, but I don't need the word is in there. Um, they also have two versions of the letter I, one with the dot, one without, which is actually super practical. Um, as far as I can tell, the I with the dot makes the E sound, the I without the dot makes the I sound. So like biz has no dot, um, versus bir has um, has a dot, and we could use that in English, because our I makes both sounds, and it's just conditional, um, but it'd be easier to indicate, and it also makes me wonder if, like, their language, it, like, if, if when people have handwriting, they write quickly, if they forget to dot an I, if that's just, like, a common trait, or if the dot on the I is much more important, because it actually signifies the difference between two different letters, um, among other things, the C with the little sedia, the curve underneath it, makes the ch sound. The normal C makes the J sound. Um, then they have a couple of accents over the letter letters, right? Like the U with the umlaut. Um, S has, with a sedia or a mark underneath um, makes the sh sound. And then, I'm trying to think, there's, there's a handful of other letters that are like a little bit different than you'd expect. Um, it's also interesting to see words that have carried over, carried over from other language languages um for example the it's like makarna is pasta which i would assume comes from the word macaroni um and oddly enough the word pasta in turkish means cake which at first is like how did that happen they don't the word for pasta is not pasta but they have the word pasta but i think that actually comes from pastry um there's there's plenty of other things um there's just like random words that are flowing around my head, right? Like su is water, suit is um, milk. They have a conjugation system that is a little bit different from Europe, um, although they, they kind of are like that bridge between Europe and Asia and always historically have been. Um, like with this symbol being literally the passageway between the two continents. Uh, but so, for example, right, like I can drop the subject of I and just say, uh, yakin, like I eat, but uh, is it ben yakin is also I eat, but it's like I is not necessary in that sentence. Um, and then you know, yashin is you eat, um, yeah is he eats or they eat, which is pretty cool because, um, well, two things one, on like Hebrew, their conjugation system is not gendered, so uh. Oh yeah, or um, what is it? Oh yeah, or oh yeah, is is he or she eats? So they like whereas in in Hebrew, you I don't remember the word. It's been a long time since I've studied Hebrew, but um, it would be like aniochev or aniochevet. I think is like I love masculine or I love feminine, um, but that's not present here. You also don't have to match adjectives to their quantities. So in, so for example, like in a lot of Western European languages, um, it matters if I say, uh, oh my gosh, too many languages flow in my head. Um, what's the word? Mela. Uh, okay. Me, un... Mera gram, that that one doesn't work because the adverb or the adjective is weird. Um, 
what is a word? Bato? It's duck, but I don't remember what language it's duck in. Take my word for it for now, because there's more important stuff to talk about. But essentially, like, uh, oh, okay. Una niña bella, or bella, whatever. Um, versus niñas bellas, bellezas, whatever. You have to make the adjective plural um, for it to matter. But, or for, for it to work. But you don't need that. You also don't need it in Mandarin, which is, a, I guess, a fun fact. I, I will do a video on Mandarin, what I've learned so far in it, because it's, it's wildly interesting. It doesn't function like other languages, and because it doesn't have, um, like, alphabetic characters as part of everyday speak, it's just not necessary to, like, conjugation doesn't really exist in the way that we think of with Western languages. Um, any sound that is not part of the word itself just doesn't get added. But then you have things like Hebrew, where the, uh, the vowels are not necessarily written. They are written when you're in grade school, but they're not written in formal, everyday writing. Um, but the pronunciation of the word does change if it's plural or masculine or feminine and there's no other indicator. Uh, anyways, other cool things about Turkish, they, the word A, which is beer, comes after the adjective. So it'd be like, uh, kujuk, kujuk, uh, beer, chujuk, which is like, um, a big child, but beer comes in the middle of big and child instead of before it, like we have in other languages. Um, when you have a pronoun, or I'm assuming a subject, I'm not that far into it, um, it has to be separated by a comma, which is very fascinating. So like, oh yeah is like, it'd be like oh comma yeah and it's he eats um like i said the subject can be dropped and i'm assuming there's plenty of other interesting things turkish is a saddle point that has absorbed a lot of other languages there's also political stuff going on that has led to like certain letters because the turkish alphabet looks like we'll say the english alphabet it's really the roman alphabet um but extended it has a few extra letters and i know that in the past couple of years there have been some issues where certain letters are not able to be used in legal documents and they primarily affect minorities, um, which is an interesting and weird thing to have happen. Um, but basically like certain names from adjacent cultures that use those letters can no longer be written using the Turkish alphabet without adapting them. And you can think of it as like when you have an ethnic name, like something uh, in Spanish, then you bring it over to the US, especially like 100 years ago, if you had an accent in your name, they probably just wouldn't write it down. And then your name lives on without the accent, um, like Gonzalez. But yeah, these, these are all just like interesting things. A lot of them having to do with migration. It almost always has to do with migration when language changes because new people bring new words and when people, and, and, and things just die through disuse um, or forced disuse, like with Native American languages and them their kids being forced to go to English-speaking schools. But there's plenty un to uncover here, and it was a, a cool little journey to go down, triggered by literally a, a single sentence exchange. Um, but yeah, I guess stay tuned for more. I like talking about languages quite a bit, and this is like the second channel, so I can feel free, I guess, a little bit to go more off script with it. Um, but the videos are also kind of posted at random because it's just whenever I've got time to study languages. So yeah, I guess stay tuned for more. Um, I'll see you in the next one.